Man, I feel so bad for Mike McKenna. He was just hung out to dry. Just when I thought this team's defense could get much worse. Yeah, giving them four power plays isn't going to help either. I mean, at least we made it close. Come on, man. This team's supposed to be winning games, not making it close. Are you sure about that? Uh, okay, you got me there. Hello guys, welcome back to DSFR. Today is game 81, it starts with the Ducks, and of course, another result where the starters do not want to lose 3-2-5 in the pond. And what seems like the thousandth time, the Stars starting off the game did not play well. Early in the game, the Klingberg Lindell pairing is sleeping as Man Manson is able to pass right in front of Silverberg and he snipes it on McKenna. Again, not his fault as Lindell was doing basically nothing. Again, another bad game for Lindell. Not a, a couple of other goals that he was on the ice for and a couple of bad coverages, but man, he was terrible as he didn't even have any really... Any really incentive to poke him and do anything with it, but Lindell just standing there as Silverberg is allowed to snipe it. Klingberg didn't do too badly, but again, Lindell is just standing there, not even doing anything, and again, this has been a terrible month for both of those two defensively, and another goal that's just given up, and just another freebie for the opponents, and this just overall the last couple months for those two, those pairing, that pairing has really not worked defensively. Offensively, it's still fine, but defensively, Ugh. But, no excuses, the Ducks are up 1-0. Now, just a minute later, Corey Perry is allowed to get a breakaway. He kind of dangles out of McKenna, but McKenna just makes the pad save, reaching back and getting it. And another just play where the defense just lets McKenna dry, and he has to save it himself. Makes a great save there, and whenever Corey Perry doesn't score, I'm a happy guy. Now, the Ducks got a couple of power plays, and on the power play, Raquel is right in front. He's allowed to shoot on McKenna a couple times and makes a couple of saves, but... Goes right back to him again. Raquel is able to bury the, I think it was like the second rebound or something. The defense just letting Raquel go into the slot and get his something done. And he scores. And well, there's any duck that's allowed to score. I'm glad it's Raquel. I love that guy. But after that single goal, the Stars start to get a little bit of an offense going as it cycles back to Ben. He passes him a fought and he rips it and snipes it on Miller. And he scores his first goal of the season as a Dallas Star of two. And he finally gets his first goal. And I think it's like his third point, something like that. In the season, it's pretty rough for him. But he finally gets a goal and in game 81. I mean, it's not really ideal, but again, with the injuries. Yeah, it is what it is. 2-1, the Stars erase the deficit by half. But after that goal, you know, the Stars were playing well, but still not good enough as Raquel gets it at the point. Silverberg just tips it past McKenna, and they score the third goal of the period, and that's a nail, just a ball buster because the Stars were playing a little bit better after that second goal. They gave up scoring that goal. The momentum would have shifted if they had just 2-1 going in the first intermission, but alas, Silverberg was a great tip to put the, star, to put the Anaheim Ducks up 3-1 over the Stars in the first period. Now Ducks got a couple of power plays in the second period, the start of the second period, and McKenna was brilliant. Again, it really wasn't his fault this game yet. He had a couple of questionable goals given up, but again, he made some fantastic saves on a lot of guys, and he made some brilliant ones, and he really, he was steady for the Stars. He really wasn't the key, really for the reason that the Stars lost. It was that atrocious defense tonight, and really, the Ducks really took advantage of that defense, but McKenna still did as much as he could. But a few minutes after that power play, Yanmark and Roussel are at a 2-1. Roussel makes a great move and then passes it right to Yanmark. He shoots a great shot, but man, Miller made a fantastic save on that and just a brilliant, brilliant opportunity. But Yanmark, just getting robbed by Miller. If you want this said that, it sounds familiar early in the season. Well, it does, because Miller is a vintage against the Stars. He didn't have the greatest night. Again, a couple of goals were suspect, but again, robbing Yanmark on that play. Now the Ducks are swarming again. The Stars not playing too great, allowing a lot of defensive uh, mistakes happen. The Ducks are doing great, though, as they swarm in that. They're swarming the slot area, as McKenna has to make quite a few stops, but Manson is right in front, and he shoots it. It goes off of McKenna's blocker and just kind of um, dribbles into the net, and that was just, just a ball breaker because that one just went off of his pad and into the nets and Manson gets the goal he's going to be great in the playoffs again he's been good in the regular season but again would like to see McKenna make that again one of his questionable goals there but still the defense was hung out we just let him hung out to dry because he was Manson was just basically alone with McKenna he's lucky that he made, didn't even make a great shot there I mean Manson had to have it dribble over the pad to get it in there but the Stars starting to play a little bit better as Patron gets it at the point. He lets it rip. Baxa just sneaks it past him. I think it deflected off of his ankle. 
around his ankle, but his elbow, something like that, it, it, it went off his arm, something along those lines, and it goes into the net. A goal for Fax, I think, is 17th of the season, and that's great to see. Whenever Fax gets a goal, I'm a happy man. And then Ben is allowed to get in, deke around the defenseman, and make a perfect shot on Miller, and he gets hit, and 3-4, with only the deficit by one, but man, a perfect perfect shot by Ben and you couldn't get much better than that. Miller really no chance on that wrist shot and a beauty by Ben makes it 3-4 and a really close game at that point. Now the perfect period keeps ticking and it was a very close game. I think a couple of teams both got power plays and it was a very close game and it was a fun game as well. That third period was pretty fun to watch and it was a tight game and it really felt like it. it didn't quite feel like playoff hockey because the stars were playing intense but it did feel like a close game deal thing did feel like both teams wanted to win but a bad defensive coverage as Kessler shoots it throughout the middle it was a weird play Kessler shoots it into the star zone it goes off of Kleinberg's stick Cogliano is just rushing right into the star zone he he collects it and scores five hole on McKenna and that's just a ball right here because Klingberg just poked it out of the air it was a weird weird play get me don't get me wrong on that one it was a weird weird play it goes off Klingberg stick Cogliano is somehow has the awareness to get it right on that bounce and score and it makes it 3-4 and that was a close game at that point and just a terrible terrible bounce for the Stars and they're down at 3-5 now and the Stars were playing decent until that point in the third period but again after that goal they pretty much just gave up but kind of still being elite but the Stars not so much and the score would end up staying that way, 3-5 for the Anaheim Ducks, the final score. And don't get me wrong, the Stars definitely deserved to lose this game. I just wish McKenna would get a win. McKenna was basically the only reason this game was close at all. I mean, Ben made it a really close game, but again, those were two instances where the Stars got a good bounce, and a good break, and a good shot. But again, McKenna was keeping them in this game. That's really all you could ask for from a backup goalie. Even though he allowed five goals, none of them were really, really his fault. Their defense was atrocious, their offense was bad, and they were getting out heavily out shot, I think. And that doesn't really happen. The Ducks don't really take that many shots, I don't think. Uh, at least against the Stars in the past couple of ga games and throughout the whole season. But the Ducks aren't usually a team to put on 40 shots, and I don't think they got that much, but I think it was around that much. And the Stars just giving up that many shots, I mean, it is what they've been doing for the past few weeks, so I guess I have to get used to it. But really all I want is for Fax to score a hat-trick and for McKenna to, I don't know, make a few saves in the LA Kings game. I want him to play. No, I don't want Lennon to play. Like, what's the point of having Lennon play? I want to see McKenna get more starts and become a better story. So yeah, basically all I want is for McKenna in this LA Kings game, which is tonight, by the way. All I really want is for him to make... I want him to not allow more than three goals. That's really my threshold for him, and I hope that he reaches that. Well, I imagine if Jack Campbell starts that game, that'll be very, very interesting. I don't know if Jack Campbell is in the AHL right now or not, but if he does and is, is able to start that game, that will be a fun game to watch, in all honesty, to see how well he does against the former team that basically gave up on him. But the last game of the start of the season is tonight in LA. That's going, I'm going to watch the whole thing. I don't think I'll have the DSFR at that, or I guess it would be like 1 o'clock if I were going to get it out. I think I would still wait till the morning. That would be the last DSFR of this season, and of this season, season 1 of DSFR, which is going to be, it's going to be look, fun looking back on how we progressed through this whole thing. It's going to be fun uh, reacting to the first episode, because... That's going to be pretty bad. It's going to be interesting to compare the first episode to the 82 episode, to say the least. But right now, the tank is alive, but don't tell McKenna that, by the way. He doesn't need to know. But yeah, the Stars played terrible again. Yeah, I don't think it's much of a storyline anymore, is it? The Stars, uh, in the last month and a half, have been as bad as you can really get. And it's just become a, just a broken record. They haven't played well. You know, we know every single game, it seems like. And it, it's uh, it's just um, just a turnaround from what they were just a few months ago. I think the peak that they were at was like February, something like that, uh, and just they completely fell in March. March was really madness. Again, if you would have said that we would have been out of playoff spot by a long shot in let's say like game probably like 65, 60, I would have been telling you crazy because at that point we were looking pretty good and well it hasn't done so much lately. Let's see if Jack Campbell starts that game. I'm gonna say. He's probably going to make probably the 40 to 45 save range. I'm going to say 43, and that's going to be my prediction. Probably going to get a shutout, you know, the normal stuff. But if you want to ride the McKenna hype train, we're riding to LA, baby.
But wait, isn't Anaheim a part of LA? Anyway, I'm not gonna get into that debate anytime soon. But yeah, if he doesn't start that 80 second game, uh, this might all be for nothing. And to any Kings fans watching this, congratulations to your automatic win. You deserve it a heck of a lot more than the Stars. Well, the San Jose Sharks fans are looking eagerly in the corner on why they lost to the Stars for some reason. But that's going to guys. Like, subscribe, and not ring that bell again. Down below, what you think of this game. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. And that game 82.